Hello my dear students welcome to the class of 11th English medium the subject is statistics chapter 4 that is measures of dispersion brought to you by Vitan sir now in this new chapter what we are going to study about is the measures of dispersion so the first question which arises is what is dispersion let's say its definition the measure which shows how far the observations of the data are scattered from the measure of average is termed as dispersion now this is the definition of dispersion but i am not expecting you guys to understand it directly if I want to simplify this, we can say that dispersion calculates how far the data is from its measure of central tendency. That means whatever data we are calculating, how far it is from the, its measure of central tendency, which could be mean, median or more. But it's difficult to just uh, understand it using the words. Let's take an example to get it properly. Okay. I am taking an example that there are three entertainment groups who has done five programs in the last month in different cities. Their individual and total earnings in thousand rupees is given as follows. Now, the first group that is A has earned 50,000, 50,000, 50,000 and 50,000 in all the five programs making a total of 250 grand. The B, the second entertainment group has earned 30,000, 40,000, 50, 60, and 70,000 rupees, making a total of 250,000. That means the total earnings of both the groups is same, but you can see the data is a bit different. And then there is a group C who only earned 10,000 in the first program, then earned 35,000, then earned 50, 65, and then 90,000 rupees, making again a total of 250,000. Now, from this data, you can clearly see that the arithmetic mean, if you check out for all the data, is same because the total is same and the number of programs are also same. That is 50,000 rupees average. But can we say that the data is evenly spread among all the five programs? That means for all the three groups, the average is 50. But can you say the data is near to 50 for all three of them? Let's analyze them one by one so we can get a clear picture. First, A group which has earned the same amount for all the five programs that is 250,000 making a total the average earning is 50,000 and observation all of the observations are also 50 that means there is no difference between the measure of central tendency that is mean and the original observations that means all the five observations are 50 and the average is also 50. So we can make a statement here that the data is not scattered. The data is not spread at all and we can say that the dispersion is zero. So your dispersion is the difference, kind of a difference between the original data and the central average data. So there is no difference here. So the dispersion is zero. Let's take the group B. For group B, the data is 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, making a total 250. So for group B, the average is again same 250 upon 5, 50,000 rupees. Some observations are below 50 while some are above 50, but they are not that far away from 50. As you can see, it is just 30, 40 or 60, 70. So they are pretty much near the central tendency value. So the data is spread over a very short distance and there is a small amount of dispersion in the data because the difference is not that big. But we can't say the same thing for the group C. As you can see from the data here, the group C average is same, that is the 50,000. But some observations are very far below the average while some are far above the average. And there is a huge gap between the highest and the lowest observations. And so if I want to make a statement here, the data is spread over a big 
distance and there is a greater amount of dispersion so from these three data i think you can grasp the concept of dispersion that means the difference between the original data and the average which we have found but why do we actually calculate dispersion in the study of statistics the calculation of dispersion is of a great importance why because the data with high amount of dispersion does not give useful results that means if the data is very far from the average for example we can say that the uh, a river has an average depth of 50 centimeters but the actual the deepest part of the river might be 200 centimeter that means there is a huge difference and if I am not that great at swimming and I see okay the average is only 50 centimeters and I may die because I may step into the 200 centimeter depth. So the data with the very high amount of dispersion does not give useful results. Therefore dispersion is very important. This dispersion needs to be calculated in exact amounts in exact figures or digits. And for this purpose certain measures have been developed by many statisticians. These measures which calculate the exact amount of dispersion in the data are called the measures of dispersion and in this chapter we are going to study some of these measures of dispersion in detail with examples with practical sums. Now the desirable characteristics of measure of dispersion just like in the third chapter we studied about the ideal characteristics for a measure of central tendency. There are many characteristics for the measure of dispersion which we should study to check whether that dispersion measure is good or not. The definition should be clear and unambiguous. Unambiguous means it should not be of a double meaning. It should be very clear and very straightforward. The simple to understand and easy to calculate measure is a desirable characteristic. It should be based on all the observations of the data. That means the measure of dispersion should include, if possible, all the observations of the data. It should be suitable for further algebraic calculations. That means this measure of dispersion should be useful for, for uh, future calculations based on algebra. That means X, Y and all those things. It should be stable measure that means uh, it should not change its value by changing the sample data derived from the same population. Uh, stability of a measure is very important when you are comparing the samples from the same populations because if the measure is not stable you will not get the correct answers for your survey or inquiry. It should not be affected by too large or too small observations that means if the observations are very large or very small and due to that our measure is changed then that measure is not that good let's start but there are two concepts of the dispersion one is the absolute measure of dispersion the second is the relative measure of dispersion let's see what does that mean and how it is useful The absolute measure of dispersion is actually a measure of dispersion which is expressed in the units, it's the same units in which the observations have been expressed. For example, kgs, liters, meters, etc. And that kind of a measure which is expressed in the units is called an absolute measure of dispersion. But the problem with this absolute measure of dispersion is that it cannot be used for the comparison of the two different sets of data. For example, I have a set of data in the kgs and another set of data in the meters. So using the absolute measure of dispersion, I cannot compare them because one answer will be in kg, another will be meter and kg in meter basically does not have any kind of a relationship. So for the use of comparison between two sets of data, we can't use absolute measure of dispersion. And for that purpose, we have relative measure of dispersion. The relative measure of dispersion is actually a measure which is not used, uh, not expressed using the units. That means it is free from the units of measurement. We call it the relative measure of dispersion. Because it does not have a unit, the variability of two or more sets of data can be and only be compared using this measure of dispersion. Uh, 
no measurement means it is not expressed in any units like kg or meter or liter or nothing like that it is not expressed it is just a digit and because it is just a digit even the data with kg liter and meters can be compared with each other because their units are ignored now let's start with a list of measures of dispersion which we are going to study in this chapter as you guys know you are in still 11th uh, standard of commerce uh, this is the first year for you in statistics so naturally not all the measures of dispersion or the high level measures of dispersion will be given to you but the most basic and the most useful measures of dispersion will be explained in this chapter which will be explained in a great detail with a lot of easy calculations so there are four measures of dispersion number one is range number two is quartile deviation number three is mean deviation number four is standard deviation so we are going to study these four measures of dispersion range quartile deviation mean deviation and standard deviation but do remember that range and quartile deviation are called the positional measures of dispersion because they are calculated based on the position of the observations whereas mean and standard deviation are known as the summary of deviations of the observations from mean now this is a statement which i am not explaining in detail right now i will explain it when i actually use these measures for calculations so just keep this mind summary of deviations from observations from mean you have heard all of these words previously but together they mean something else i will explain it when the time comes let's start with the first measure of dispersion that is range now range is one of the easiest measures of dispersion as its definition is simple the difference between the highest and the lowest observation of the data is called range because it's easiest to understand easiest to calculate it is quite simple so i am going to complete this range in this tutorial itself only because the calculations are very short here let's see the absolute range is calculated as xh minus xl so range is where highest observation that is xh is uh, and it, from it the lowest observation the xl is deducted so the difference between the highest and the lowest observation is called range now range is absolute measure of dispersion with units same as the observations so we can't use it to compare so we need to calculate its relative measure that is relative range the formula for which is xh minus xl divide by xh plus xl so as you can see the absolute range and the relative range has a bit of a difference in the formula the absolute range is highest minus lowest while relative range is highest minus lowest divide by highest plus lowest and also remember that the second name of relative range is coefficient of range so sometimes in the question coefficient of range is asked where you have to calculate the relative range and only range is mentioned then you have to calculate the absolute range okay remember this keep in this keep this in your minds for obtaining range the frequency is not required because we just need the basic observation so the formula for obtaining range for the grouped or ungrouped data is same we don't have any different formulas for that we will understand it using the questions directly the advantages of range we have to know what are its advantages and disadvantages the first one is it is very clearly defined because it's easy simple in a single statement its computation is simple as we have known highest minus lowest that's all it is useful especially when the variability in the data is less that means when the data has less amount of variabilities we can easily use range the disadvantages of range are all the observations are not used in the computation as only the highest and the lowest is used which is not good it is very sensitive to sampling fluctuations that means if there is any difference or a problem while sampling the answer will change drastically that means it is not used when the, there are some errors in the sampling methods it is not suitable for further algebraic calculations that means using range we can't calculate any future uh, algebraic methods so it is not used in greater studies of statistics in short 
it cannot be calculated for frequency distributions with open ended classes that means if a class does not have a lower limit or the upper limit that means a data with no lower limits and upper limits we can't calculate range for that because we need a clear lowest data and the highest data whereas open ended classes sometimes have infinite lower limits or upper limits so we can't calculate range for that thing now i am going to start and complete with the exercise 4.1 which consists of the sums based on range range is one of the most easiest most easy measure of dispersion so i am not taking a lot of time for that okay question number 1 the following data refer to the heights in centimeter of 10 students we have to find the range in the coefficient of range using the data for the heights of the students now the data is given as you can see on your screen what we need to do for this is that we have to start by finding out the highest observation and the lowest observation now as you can see from the data the highest observation here that is xh is 185 and the lowest observation here that is xl is 145 so what we are going to do we are going to calculate range that is highest minus lowest that is 185 minus 145 that would be 40 cm okay so we can say that the range of heights is 40 cm next we have to calculate the coefficient of range that is the relative range highest minus lowest upon highest plus lowest we will just put the same values in the equation subtraction and addition will give us 40 upon 330 simplifying it 4 upon 33 that is 0.12 now as you can see there is no measure here just 0.12 no units so we are going to write the statement that the coefficient of range of heights is 0.12 that's all this is a kind of a sum which we do using the range let's move forward to the second question let us start with question number 2 a bus company has 77 buses traveling in the city the information of number of passengers at a particular day at a particular time is given below we have to find range and coefficient of range for the number of passengers now the data is given through a table the number of passengers and the number of buses now here the question is depicting the number of passengers and thus we don't need the number of buses for the calculation of range we just need the highest and the lowest number of passengers here because this is a frequency distribution but we are calculating range so we don't need the frequencies from here so the highest number of passengers would be 37 as you can see from the data and the lowest number of passengers would be 2 from the data so the range is xh minus xl that is 37 minus 32 that is 35 passengers so we can say that the range of passengers is 35 people here the unit are the passengers itself next we have to find the coefficient of range that is highest minus lowest divide by highest plus lowest so we will just put the data in the and we get 35 upon 39 which is 0.897 and rounding it off will get a 0.90 so we can say that the coefficient of range for the number of passengers is 0.90 so as you can see here the range remains same the method remains same the states uh, steps for calculating range remains same irrespective whether it's ungrouped data or the grouped data you will still get it better when i show you the classes data in which again the steps remain the same there is no difference in range for the calculation of range question number 3 using following frequency distribution of marks of school we have to find range and relative range okay so simple question here the marks and the number of students but once again i let me tell you guys even if it's a class and the frequencies are given we don't need the frequencies here because range only depends on the given observations it doesn't matter uh, what is the frequency of each and every observation so here highest and the lowest values of our classes as you can see the left class is 20 to 30 so the lowest value is 20 and the rightmost class is 70 to 80 so highest value is 80 so the highest observation from the classes is 80 and the lowest observation from the classes is 20 so it's 
that's simple we don't need to find mid values we don't need to do any of those things we just need to look at the data find the highest and lowest and find the range that's all so highest is 80 minus 20 lowest that is 60 so 60 marks is the range of the marks scored by students next we have to find the coefficient of range uh, so for the calculation of coefficient of range uh, which is highest minus lowest that is 80 minus 20 upon 80 plus 20 that is uh, we can say that it is 60 upon 100 and your answer will be 0 0.6 so your statement here will be the coefficient of range of marks is 0 0.6 moving on to the next question this will be the last question of the exercise and today's tutorial and the concept of range that is fourth question the frequency distribution of daily income in thousand rupees of 80 shops of an area is as follows we have to find the absolute and relative measures of range of daily income from it absolute measure is simple range relative measure is the coefficient of range now the daily income in thousand rupees and number of shops once again let me remind you guys that number of shops doesn't matter we just need to look at the daily income then again if you look at the daily incomes here the classes are inclusive now if we remember correctly always whenever we have done the sums we have converted these inclusive classes into exclusive classes by adding 0.5 and subtracting 0.5 but because this is range and this is one of the only exceptions where we don't need to convert inclusives into exclusives we just need to take whichever values are there we don't convert any value into anything for the sake of range that means if these are the inclusive classes we are going to keep them as the reason we don't need the between values we just need the leftmost value and the rightmost value the leftmost value is 5 that's the lowest observation and rightmost value is 34 which is the highest observation it doesn't matter whether it is inclusive or exclusive we don't change the data we take whatever it is so the highest observation will be 34 the lowest observation will be 5 and using this observation the range of the data will be 34 minus 5 that is 29,000 rupees because the income is in thousand rupees so just write the statement here that the range of the daily income is 29,000 rupees next we have to calculate the coefficient of range that is highest minus lowest that is upon highest plus lowest 34 minus 5 upon 34 plus 5 that is 29 upon 39 and your answer is 0.744 rounding it off 0.74 so we can say that the coefficient of range of the daily income is 0.74 okay so i hope you guys are clear whether it is ungrouped data just take highest minus lowest if it is discrete again take highest minus lowest it doesn't matter whether it's, whether it's an inclusive class or an exclusive class just to take the data of the highest and the lowest observations and find the difference that would be range and difference upon the addition will be the coefficient of range that's all i hope you guys like this tutorial in case of any suggestions or comments you can put it in my comment section below please like this video subscribe my channel and share it with your friends and wait for my next tutorial in which i will be explaining the quartile deviation and the relative measure that is the coefficient of the quartile deviation in detail thank you and i, I will see you next time welcome students to with answers an account academy that's better way to success for you i am vitan vora and i teach accountancy statistics and social science you can contact me on my cell number 9194263 1084 please give a sub to my channel and also check out my other video playlist which you can see on the screen thank you and i will see you in the next video